Okay, here are all the reasons why the Miller pedal is a lot better than this one. First off, it has a heel stop on it. So if it's on the ground and it's crooked or something, you just put your foot on it, drag it back to wherever you want it. You can move it around anywhere with your foot on the pedal. This one, to get it straight, you gotta fumble around, kick it, and then it spins again so you kick it more, and then it's lined up. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, my welders are on the left side of my table. I'm sure a lot of other people's are too, half of the people, whatever. This cord coming out the right side only with no other options is really annoying after being used to this miller where you can route the cord anywhere you want. You can put it in four different locations, out this side, this side, front or back. So that's nice. And then the next thing is the size of the pedal. It's nice to have your foot on the entire thing. A lot bigger is nicer. And then where the pivot points are, this miller, you can put almost all your weight on it and it balances really, really nice when you're standing in awkward positions. This one, I think the pivot point's back too far because if you're putting pressure on it, your, your weight's up here. So you gotta get your foot way back off of it to get your balance point center. Then the next thing is the miller is really tight from the very top. This one, it has that much movement before it starts, you can feel it engage like inside of it. It's just really sloppy on top and even sounds cheap. The Miller has a wider base on it, which is more stable. You can't get the Miller to teeter like that. Okay, Miller was really smart with this. First time I took this apart several years ago, I wondered why it had a belt drive. That seemed complicated to me. But, so this one, it's just, let's see if I can get you an angle here. If you look down in there, it's a splined shaft riding directly on gears. So it's gear to gear and they aren't meshed 100% perfect. They're pretty tight, but there's still a little bit of slop. If you, if you spin this, you're, so right here I'm spinning the resistor. There's a little bit of play before this gear where your, that your foot's on moves. So the miller is more accurate in that respect. Okay, miller connector over here. This one, the miller's plastic and the other one's metal. Normally I like metal parts over plastic, but the miller one's thick and when it's going on the machine, it threads a lot nicer because it's not metal on metal. This one grinds and it feels like it's eventually gonna gall up. It's, it's even rough, brand new, threading on versus the miller. Every single other pedal I've ever tried besides a miller, I don't know, maybe there's some out there now that are a little bit better, but I haven't seen them yet. If you guys know, let me know. This is pretty annoying too bottom surface is convex so the middle's higher and see if I can get a good angle here see how that squares rocking a little bit so that means the middle's in contact on the ground and it lets it spin out of position really easy see how easy that spins if the contact points were just in the corners, it'd stay where you put it a lot better. Okay, thanks for watching. The rest of this video is an ad for the TIG button that I use and sell. So if you don't want to hear about that, you can tune out. So the reason I use this, there's several reasons. When you're, when you're welding at a table, I don't really care to use these type of pedals ever. But the miller, if you're at a comfortable table in a chair, with parts, you can sit down and you're not moving around them. This works pretty good. And I would maybe use it for really, really thin stainless if I couldn't use a pulser. But er pretty much everything else, I prefer the TIG button. I use this thing in 99% of the videos I've made. And so even sitting down, you can have, you can have 
a lot better posture with both feet planted on the ground. I was starting to have my back and neck hurting pretty bad from repetitions, repetitious movements. When I was doing a lot of those intake elbows, I'd always be hunched over with one hip up higher because my foot was on a pedal. And then after using this, you can keep both feet planted on the ground and your hips are nice and level and it's just a lot more comfortable. And if you're getting around the backside of stuff, when you stand up, you don't need to worry about kicking a foot pedal around or dragging it around. Any type of work on a ladder or under a car, this is way better than back, I don't know, 15 years ago. I remember welding on my buddy's roll cage in one of his drag race cars. I'd have to put this thing between my legs and use it like a thigh master to weld parts of the cage in. Whereas this, it's always there. And it's pressure sensitive, just like foot pedals. The harder you push, the more amperage you get. So if you're interested in one of those, you can check out my website. I sell them on there. Links in the description below. Thanks. One last thing. If you look at the price of the TIG button and you think it's kind of expensive, price one of these out, or even better yet, price out a wireless miller and see how much that is. That'll scare you. The reason the TIG button costs what it does is because this isn't the only part to the TIG button. It comes with a new connector into the machine and then it has to have a control box so it communicates properly. And if you're new to TIG welding, especially aluminum TIG welding, I've made a really good website that teaches you from a beginner's perspective how to learn how to weld all this. Outside corners, lap joints, T-welds. Everything's explained in detail from all the welder settings, from basic welders to advanced welders, gas flow rates, tungsten diameter selection, why I use it, exactly how I shape it and why, what filler rod I use and why I use it, and then all the tools I use, machinery part numbers. The website's really thorough. It's all in text format, so it's easy to reference, and a lot of good arc shots, high-quality close-up arc shot videos, too. If anything isn't answered on the website, feel free to email me, and I can answer your questions there.